I'll be showing 11 new features in the just released Windows 11. New features, updates, and a host of improvements. And in the immortal words of Nigel Tucknell from Spinal Tap, these go to 11. So let's get started. The first new feature, and one that it's probably talked about the most so far with Windows 11, is the centered set of apps and start button. So if I click on the start button here, I have a newly redesigned start menu. Lots of great stuff here. It's been simplified, less busy than Windows 10. And I've got apps that are pinned here, and I can go to all apps. And this is kind of like the big list in the previous start menu that you've probably seen. I've also got recommended right here. And there's a set of things that I've been working on that have been recommended that I can pin. So I can right click here and pin this to my start and do the other types of things. I could pin it to the taskbar or go to settings. So it's kind of been cleaned up. I personally like it quite a bit. I felt the old start button had a little bit too much going on. The other thing is that the shutdown and restart right here is right there. So sleep, shutdown, and restart. And your profile, you click here and you can change things about your account settings. You can lock, you can sign out. Now for people who don't like change, and there's plenty of people like that in the world, you can move all of the start button and apps back to the left. So if you right click here and go to taskbar settings, you can easily go here to taskbar behaviors, scroll down and choose this here and then say left. Whoop, it swaps over to the left. And you can also go back to the center if you want. And I'm gonna be going through more of the settings. They're really nice updates for settings a little bit later on in this video. Things like automatically hiding the taskbar are still there. And the little uh, peak desktop, this little button here, if you click it, that's back. So a lot of the taskbar settings are still there. And I'll come back and go deeper into settings later. The second new feature is one of my favorites and it's how windows snapping and alignment have been much improved. So for any window, I can now go to the upper right and just hover right here and you're gonna have a bunch of new options. So let's say I wanna have a set where I've got one bigger one in the middle and two left that are a little smaller. I'll click on this one, and now I've got the blog here in the middle. I'll click here to get one of my left windows with OneNote, and maybe I'll click here to get my right window with Outlook. So really easy to get a cool window alignment. I'll hover again, and I have more options. Maybe instead I wanna do something like this. I'll click here, there's my Outlook, and then I'll have my OneNote there, and I'll have my Edge browser here. So a lot of options to explore with snapping your windows. The third new feature is related to that snapping of windows, and it is snap groups. And this is a new concept in Windows 11. So let's say that I've minimized all my windows right here, and I wanna bring them back in a way so I don't have to go and reset everything. If I hover over any of those windows that were open, so I had Outlook and OneNote and Edge open. So I'm gonna go here and hover over OneNote. So I see the OneNote here, but then there's also this is called a snap group and see how it has OneNote, Outlook and Edge together. So if I click here, all three of those windows in their exact same placement come up. So to show that again, this time I'll go hover over Outlook and you can see that snap group is always there. So I'll click that, everything comes back. The fourth new feature is a drastically redone and improved settings in Windows 11. So I'm gonna open up the start menu with control escape, little shortcut, and we will type settings. And here's the new settings app. I'll click here. What you see is a beautiful redone settings, fluent UI, improved icons, and improved layout across the board. So right here is system, and this is the one that has all your information, display, sound, notification, storage, etc. I'm gonna show a couple of my favorite areas have been redone. One of them is accessibility. So click on accessibility here. Now the layout has been much improved. You can see vision, hearing, interaction. So things like Windows speech and dictation, mouse are down here, some of the hearing, and then vision. So it's a much nicer layout. So if I drill into one of these, you're gonna see these are some of the ways that I can change text size. There's a little breadcrumb up here. So it's really easy to go back to where you were. Things like updating your mouse pointer, all of that accessibility info has been redone and grouped in a way that I feel is much more easy to explore. Another big area for improvement is personalization. So if you go into here, lots of ways to improve your themes, your background, colors. So I right now have the default theme, but if I'm gonna to switch to a different theme, I can just click this and I can get this really quickly. So I'll go here. Everything is quickly updated. I can minimize this. Here's my new background. You can see everything is dark now. There's some beautiful themes in here to explore and it's super easy, just click one of them to get updates. So I'll go back to the default. 
Like I showed earlier, all the taskbar updates are here, things about lock screen and other theme info. If you wanna drill in and do custom themes, I can go here and this lets you get more details. So I've got my themes here. I can go to the store and get some other themes and actually I'm gonna show how to get a cool theme from the store right now. So let's click browse themes. There are a bunch of nice and free themes right here in the store. The store app has been redone as well. So I'll scroll down and find one. Color explosion, that looks fun. I'll click here and let's install. Okay, now it's done. I'm just gonna close this. And if you go back into the themes area, you'll see the color explosion. So I just click here now and it's installed a beautiful color theme. So I've got my color explosion, things are dark around the bottom. So a lot of different options for themes that you can go and explore. Also, if you wanna choose individual things like color, sounds, cursors, or background, you can drill in right here to do that. That's a quick tour of settings. There's a ton more to check out in here, but hopefully that gives you a sense of how it's laid out and all the types of updates that have happened. The fifth new feature is multiple desktops and some improvements in Windows 11. Multiple desktops came out in Windows 10, and there's some updates in Windows 11 that makes it a little bit easier to use. So this is the idea where if I hover here, I get desktops. And I can have a work desktop, a personal desktop, a gaming desktop, and that can have different apps that you have open and are using. It's kind of like a virtual space. So in this case, I've got desktop one. I'll create a new desktop, click here. And for this desktop, I can right click and I can rename it. I can move left or right and choose a background. So let's choose a background for desktop number two. And I'll go up here and choose the little sun with the water for my background. Now, when I go down and click, you're gonna see desktop one and then desktop two. Desktop two is empty in terms of things that I've opened. So maybe on desktop two, I've got my edge browser and maybe I have things like Excel booted over here and whatever else I'd be working on on this desktop. I can also name these things. So I'm gonna hover and that comes up and we'll right click and I'll choose rename and I'll type work. And maybe this one here is personal. So right click, rename, personal. And I can shift these. So maybe I right click on this and I say move to the right and it shifts the spot and the order. And I can have multiple desktops and I just hover on one, hover on the other. So my work one, I've got my web browser up and I've got Excel on my personal one. Maybe I have OneNote open and I've got Camtasia because we're recording. So this lets me be efficient in swapping between these different desktops. The sixth new feature is widgets and some big improvements. So right here on the taskbar is the widgets menu. Let's click that. This opens up a little panel. I've got nice helpful widgets, just at a glance info. So things like weather, there's stocks, you can customize this, sports, your calendar, and then news gets all pulled in. There's a lot of options also just to search and I can add widgets. So if I click here, lots of different widgets you can add to do tips traffic entertainment etc and so you can also personalize things i can personalize my interest so it's just a nice way if i don't want to go browsing all over the web to look at stuff i can have a nice little customized widgets page right here and there's also a scroll bar so you can scroll down quite a way to see even more information that will automatically be popped up the seventh new feature is keyboard shortcuts and there's some cool ones in windows 11 a lot of shortcut fans out there the first one is for the widgets menu, do Windows key plus W and that'll open that widgets menu right up. The next one's my personal favorite, Windows key plus A opens up the redesigned little quick settings menu. Windows key plus N opens up the new notification center. You can see the calendar, but there's also notifications right here. You can access focus assist. I've got a notification here and I can clear out those notifications as well. Back to the Windows snapping behavior and the improvements there, if I do Windows key plus Z, it'll pop up the little snap options right in the upper right. I like this one a lot. I've been using it quite a bit since Windows 11 came out. The last new shortcut I'll talk about is Windows key plus C. What that does is it automatically launches the new Teams that is built right into Windows 11. And with that, we're gonna move on to feature number eight, which is the new Teams built into Windows 11. So I used Windows key plus C to launch it. And right here, this is a version of Teams that is built for consumers. And it's great for chatting with friends, with family. It's kind of like the next generation Skype is how you might think about it. So I'll click get started right here. This launches the new Teams dialog for the first time. And I'm gonna use my consumer account, which is my Hotmail account. I could choose to use a different account, but in this case, we'll just choose this. So the first time you run it, you put in your name, you put in your info, you can sync your outlook.com and Skype contacts so you can find all the other people that first time. So if you're using Skype for a while, this is really easy and I'll choose let's go. 
So here is Teams. It's very similar to the corporate version of Teams or the school version of Teams, but it's a little bit more scaled down. It's really focused on chat as well as video. But you can see here the interface is fairly similar. I can go and look at my activity. That will show up here. You can chat with people. So I can chat with my contacts, I can form groups, and there's also a calendar. So if you're familiar with Teams, this calendar will look similar, and I can go and obviously do meetings. So I can meet now, and I'll start meeting. This is just like the version that you have in Teams or work or Teams for school. Turn on my camera. Hey there, hit background filters. Maybe I wanna blur my background like this, and then join. I can get a meeting link. I can share it in Outlook Calendar, Google Calendar, or just share this link with an email. I'll just close this. Here I am in Teams meetings, all these options up here, very similar to what you've seen in a normal Teams meeting, and I'll just leave here. So that's a quick tour of the Teams that is built right into Windows, and expect updates and improvements to come here in the future. The last thing I'll show with Teams in Windows 11 is the compressed mode. So Teams is running in the background here, and if I click it, it's a lot like Skype. So I have my contacts here, and I could go click here and start a chat with Ari or a call or a video call. We'll close it. And I have my chats, my contacts, I could do chat or meet right here. So this is just a little quick view. The ninth new feature are improvements to the quick settings menu. So in the lower right, right here, these little icons and all these little features are called quick settings. And you can see that these are now actually grouped together. So I click here and it opens up a redesigned menu. And I mentioned this briefly when I showed the shortcut, which is Windows key A. So things like Wi-Fi and network, if I click here, this has been redesigned. I can go back this way to turn Wi-Fi on or off. Bluetooth, your VPN. Accessibility is linked right here, which is really powerful. So if I click here, I can have some of my accessibility settings right there. So magnifier, color filters, a bunch of options. So we've added that because accessibility is really critical for an inclusive experience. Airplane mode on or off. And then I can also do things like volume and power. And you can see that the charging is right there now. I could edit here. So I can add and remove some of these things. I can add things by like battery saver, maybe keyboard layout. I like to add battery saver directly into my quick settings. So I'll choose add that. And then I'm done. Now you can see battery saver is right there. So this is customizable. If you want to go deeper right into the settings from here, I click the gear and that takes me back into the settings menu. The 10th new feature is Focus Assist Updates and Improvements. Focus Assist is a feature that removes distractions and you can control notifications and who can disturb you or not. A quick way to get to Focus Assist is do Windows key plus N, so opening up your notifications, and then go to Focus Assist Settings. This takes you into the Settings menu, and if you want to get to Focus Assist through Settings, you can search for it directly here. So if I type Focus Assist, it also pulls it up right there. Now there are some improvements to the layout and some of the options that you have. So right now, Focus Assist, if you turn it off, you're gonna get all the notifications that you ever dreamed of. You can also do things like priority and you can customize the priority list. So if I click here, I can customize exactly who can disturb me and when, so showing incoming calls or reminders, or you can add specific contacts and people. So when I have priority list, only those people can get through, or I can add or subtract apps that can get through. Maybe I don't want to get disturbed by any type of app. I can remove all these or I could add those. So go back to focus assist here. You can also set to hide all notifications except for alarms. Another nice option is showing a summary of what I missed. So maybe I go into focus assist mode and I'm heads down on something. Three hours later, when I turn focus assist off, I want to see what was happening, who was trying to get a hold of me or what apps were trying to ping me. Some other improvements are to the rules that you can have. So a lot of different options around, hey, only during these times turn it on or off, or if I'm duplicating my display, maybe I'm playing a game and I want priority only. So lots of different options on how you can tune Focus Assist to match your needs. The 11th new feature is updates and improvements to Windows Dictation, which is built in. Dictation works anywhere in Windows, so anything that can accept a field of text, even something simple like Notepad here, but it works in Word or PowerPoint or the web, anywhere that you can type with a keyboard, all you need to do is do Windows key plus H. Now the Dictation dialog is open. Click the button again to turn it off, and I can also have commands now, things like delete that or bold that. We even have auto punctuation. So I'll click got it. And this dialogue is new, and I can move this anywhere I want. 
I can click the settings right here and there are some new options. So I can say auto punctuation. So now dictation is smart and knows exactly how and when I'm speaking. Also, I can do voice typing launcher right here. I can access voice typing in a text box, so anywhere I want. Dictation is also supported in multiple languages. Let's see how auto punctuation works. We'll close this and let's click the microphone again. Now I am typing with my voice. Dictation adds a period automatically. How are you doing? It even adds a question mark. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.